Did everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did everybody sign in on the list? Clipboard somewhere? It's going on. Call me in order. Roll call. Yes. Mulder. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Reese. Yes. Anybody here for public forum? Motion on the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Mulder. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Wilson. Yes. Reese. Yes. Okay, we have the public permit for the Sac County Sheriff's Office. Been approved. Motion to approve it. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Holton. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Stanky. Yes. Tom. Yes. Reese. Yes. We have a building amendment for Ross and Cammy Moeller. Is a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second. Roll call. Holton. Yes. Stanky. Yes. Tom. Yes. Reese. Yes. Recuse. Okay, we have a, uh, I'm going to open the public hearing on the rezoning request. Um, Scott, I'd like you to give us a synopsis of what you're going to do if you would. And when we get done, anybody that would like to uh, address the council, please come to the podium and state your name and hopefully you do two or three minutes and we'll move on. Go ahead. Hi. Scott Lyon, I represent Lakefoot Partners. Uh, we have our partners here, the fourth foot's going to be showing up. Um, we like to do some moderate income housing development there. Um, we're requesting 45, well, we actually requested 42, but the your guys' the zoning, the R5, allows us to do 40 foot. Um, the houses that we have planned to go on here are two to three bedrooms. All of them are. Uh, most of them are double car garages. We have four different options that we'd like to put in here, like I said, for low to moderate income. We'll hopefully hit the 195 to $225,000 range on a, on a resale. Is, uh, honestly, hopefully we lumber prices come in on that. We can do it. Um, we can request for that. Oversized lots, we can build a bigger house and not affordable for the workforce at the city of Lakeview has kind of given us some ideas of what the target price we need to hit. So that's why we're requesting smaller lots, obviously making things cash flow in a development, because you get you get, you get about three more lots on there, uh, other than we'd have it there for the lots. And uh, we have a couple of different options. I think the city council has it. Of, Entrances, neither one's dead in the water. We definitely have access one way from the west. We're still, I'm throwing out the idea of the east entrance. Um, once we know what you guys decide on as far as the zoning, then we'll see those two options where we're going to be at. Which way we can get in, which, you know, obviously I think the west entrance or east entrance is a lot better for the city. Doesn't make us a lot of difference as far as ours does because we're just selling the lots. In the houses off of the access for public and the city's utility public power sources snow removal everything else is a lot easier in that way so thank you any other questions anyone else like to address the council before we do that if we can don you just want to or mayor excuse me i just want to acknowledge uh we do have two written comments and and there was a written comment from uh, steve carstens in your packet there's a written comment from uh, Cheryl Solberg uh, at your seat tonight. Also, you can written comments also from Chris Mason from SETD. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Resolution 2141 is approving the request to rezone. Um, can I ask a question? Yes. On, on that, um, where the proposed road is now, that's 
access. Mm -hmm. How wide is that? Is that going to be wide enough to plow snow? It's 50 foot, which means, which means your ordinance is okay. okay. Just the, the other thing about this is that it has gone before the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission. It is uh, recommended uh, for approval, but they certainly had an issue with any discussion about eminent domain, and they passed their motion recommending approval uh, contingent uh, without eminent domain. Um, I have a couple of comments. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of eminent domain in any shape or form, but the Karsten family originally sold this land to Brenner. And I wonder what the what they thought the use of the land was going to be at that time. And I've been told that the access from the east was included in that, and then it got dropped in the legal, and I don't know if that's true or not. doesn't matter. Um, then Brenner did not have that access. Um, <coughs> these guys have paid a substantial amount of money for this land, and I don't know how you think they can just sit in there and eat it. Um, so I guess I, I would I think it doesn't matter to them, you know. I think it I think it's unfortunate if they can't get access to the east only because it isn't good down by the other. It it affects a lot more property owners down there um, where the where the south access is. It's going to be harder for the city. It's going to be more traffic out in the middle of the wrong road with not as good a view. Those are my concerns about it. Um, but I don't think you can sell someone property and then expect them to just sit there. So I think the development is, is, is a good thing. We need this kind of housing. Um, I wish that some kind of agreement between the buyer and the seller could be done with the East Access. So it's just my comment. I'd like to address that evident domain. I guess I never, I never heard it here that it was brought up that we were ever going to try something like that. So. I'm a big believer that uh, you got to work with the public that you're dealing with, try to make that happen on both sides. But again, like I said, I, their concern is about the domain, and I never, I'm not in favor of that either at all. But they, but you know, the way I understand it, Lyndon can address this. I believe that they had a purchase agreement with the Karsten family, a signed purchase agreement to purchase the ground, and then that was withdrawn. So you know, so this correct. land wasn't exactly, I mean, it's not like they never wanted to sell it. They did want to sell it. It seemed to be a disagreement on how They have all their signatures, but we did have this person's signature. I see. Okay. Thank on you. On a purchase agreement for, for a agreed amount. Okay. All right. Thank you. I address that issue of the signed agreement. Go ahead. There was never a signed agreement between the Karstens and the developer. The Karstens, my mother was approached by the developer and by, well, actually by the developer's agent, real estate agent. They went back and forth on what the description of that easement would be. And it, it got to the point where my mother got quite upset with the fact that every time she pulled into her driveway, driveway there was a new set of flags going across her yard, that this will now be the new <coughs> description of that easement. It got out to 78 feet from the south edge of her property up to her driveway is where they wanted to go with the easement. That's when the, that's when the negotiations stopped. She says, she called me and she asked, what do I do now? The description of this easement is going to be ridiculous. And I said, well, you have no signed agreement, Mother. They have not signed the contract at all. There's nothing on the contract from Lakewood Parkers. It was all generated one direction to her. And they did get my mother's signature on it, but the legal description was never established. They had no agreement to purchase that property ever, just to make sure that everybody understands that. Steve, we put flags out, so your mother had a visual. There's three of us partners there when we met with her, and we stood there, 
and she agreed to that. So I personally put the flags out. I'm skylining if you can't see me anyway. Put the flags out so she had a visual because we did not want to surprise her with anything. And that's, it, it originally it would start in the driveway. Then we moved it south to 78 feet, which is the lot pin that's right by the light pole there. And that's when we, that's the day we put the flags out when she said yes to that. And that's when she actually signed the agreement two days after that or three days after that we talked about that. That's why I put the white flags out so she could visualize what she was selling. Because we wanted to make sure we didn't want any hard feelings at all. There was nothing there. We weren't, we backed up three times from, the, from our original one. And then, when, Steve, you got you got the purchase agreement, and that's when it went to 50 foot, and we agreed to that. And that wasn't on the table very long, but we agreed to the 50 foot for that sale price. Did we get anything signed? No, because then you retracted that offer also. <coughs> she came to me, she had had enough. With the, with the flag placements. Right. And so well, I said, you had flags there is just to yeah, make sure no. she had a visual. It's just, just so she knew, because we didn't want her to say, come back and say, well, this is what we agreed on. So that's why we put the flags there. That's the only reason the flags were there. Only reason. We're going to move on. This is not about whether anybody signed a contract. We're going to rezone this. That's what the problem is. We have a motion on resolution 2141. Second. I'll second. Roll call. So the motion then approves this resolution and the, the resolution approves this zoning change and then authorizes the preparation of an amendment to the zoning Okay, Steinkamp? Yes. Tom? Yes. Boltman? Um, I, I'd just like to say too that I am totally against eminent domain on this project and that those issues that were just talked about are between the buyer and the seller, and not the city. Correct. I don't think the city should get involved in anything like that. And then we're not. Anyway, uh, I will just. Reese? I'm totally against them in that domain, too, and I, I haven't, uh, as long as everything gets in order, I would say it's okay. Okay. And Laura? I also am against eminent domain in any circumstance. <coughs> And I will vote yes. Okay, Dennis Carey. Mr. Carey, hope you guys can get it worked up. Okay, we're going to open the public hearing on the designation of the expanded urban renewal area. Uh, before we start, Scott's got a little. Matthew, I tell you what, obviously this is a, a topic that a lot of people are, are interested in, but I did want to bring everybody really up to speed. On, uh, on on this amendment and what would be included in that. Well, Scott's done, and everybody can take a chance and come to the podium and give your opinion one way or the other. We're going to run through this first. So I do want to just go through this briefly about this urban renewal plan. So we do have a... Uh, Pardon me one second. Is everybody muted? Okay. So about this urban renewal plan amendment. Um, just several things that this urban renewal area is actually uh, known in Lakeview as urban, rene urban renewal area number three. Um, this is, uh, was originally established then in 1999, originally established then for the Evapco project. Since then, it has been amended several times. You'll see in, in 07, in 09, 14, 16, and 18 that it's been a, amendment, amended to uh, include different projects or include different uh, funds and most often to include different lands although there was no new lands in 14. So uh, those, those are the urban renewal areas and the map might be a little hard to to read but you see the original pink from Evapco in 99. Next amendment was in 07 is blue and actually included a lot of the uh, 
the right way. And uh, some streetscape work was done uh, with that then too, and also included uh, the campground area, Crescent Beach. 2009 uh, was in included the um, the hotel area, though. so the hotel and, and the restaurant out there, as well as uh, some additional right of way. You see, it runs down that the right of way there of, of 175. And a, an amendment in uh, in 2016 added some additional right of way again on the highway, looking at some potential beautification projects out there, and then also uh, included some areas around City Shop. And then also in uh, 2018, where we added some land again, downtown area, added the rear and salvage yard, added the, uh, the Beckman housing development area. included in the 2021 amendment. A lot of it's driven by a couple of industrial projects. The VAPCO project out there, so VAPCO is off to the right of the screen. Only a portion of their, their land is included here in that. And then also, uh, Jacobson project is a big driver of this also. You see a lot of the lands also along, along Highway 175. And then also see some of the ag lands to the north. And when we actually uh, needed permission from the uh, landowner to to include that, and then uh, it was his request then that, that we would actually include all of that area then in, in the urban renewal area. <coughs> so why are these lands included in an urban renewal area? And just the main point here is that TIF funds can only be expended in an urban renewal area. That's uh, one of the one of the main uh, limitations about the use of spending TIF. So what uh, again? What's included in the urban renewal or TIF area? And for us. Um, the urban renewal area and the TIF area for private lands, they've all, all, all been the same. We don't have different areas on that. They're both urban renewal and TIF. So lands that are within the TIF zone collect, collect that TIF revenue. So just the, the deal about, about collecting TIF revenue, and you can use the, the original Evapco project as a great example where they went out there and they built on ag land, undeveloped ag land, and that undeveloped ag land has a value that's down here. And when they built their original plant, they then had value that's up here. So that when you talk about tax increment financing, the increment is between the new value and the base value. Okay. So within that base value, there, the the uh, um, folks, the other taxing entities, the county and the school, they're still continuing to get their, their taxes off of that base value. But for that increment. It's collected as a TIF tax, goes into a special um, revenue fund here with the city to where the city does collect the city share, the county share, the school share on these on these new developments. Okay. A lot of that school share is backfilled by the state. And then also there are certain things that aren't uh, eligible for, for TIF. Like if anyone has debt service, they always continue to receive their debt service money. And that couple is a... Uh, another uh, physical plant levy. <clears throat> so again, why about in, in including these lands in the urban renewal, renewal area, TIF revenues then are used only for, for the purposes identified in, in urban renewal plan. The projects that are included in this amendment are these four. Um, there, there's an, a water main out to Evapco. We'll talk about each one of these some more. The Northwest Pressure System, the Station deals with water. 
Jacobson incentive uh, is an incentive payment to, to Jacobson for their expansion project, and then also the community center. So that Evapco water main project, what would what would happen is the city is going to run a 12-inch water main from the water tower down the north side of Highway 175 out to the Evapco site. Okay, it's needed for their big project for for uh, um, fire protection and be able to utilize their their uh, sprinkler system up there. But uh, when it gets out there, though, it connects into the existing water system that's out there. And Evapco is certainly currently served by a 10-inch that comes up from the lake. So what this has the the additional benefit of doing then is tying in another water source around the lake. So um, for our lake residents, that doesn't necessarily mean that you'll see any change in water pressure or anything like that, but the amount of water, the quantity of water um, would increase. And again, it's a, a fantastic thing for, uh, for fire protection out around the lake. As far as this water main project goes, phase one is done. And that is a, the work that's out there at the Evapco plant site. To where we uh, have gone, basically from the uh, from the highway right away north to the plant, <coughs> and the cost there you see at four uh, five uh, five ninety five. Also, another point on this is that the development agreement is already in place with Evapco. Now, Northwest Pressure Station, we we've, we've had complaints over the years from folks in the northwest part of town. So this is school. Uh, the uh, nursing home, and then and then residents up there in that area. Water pressure is is a little lower in that part part of town than it is in the rest of the area. So the proposal here is that we would add a pressure station, okay? And then then what they're doing is augmenting the uh, the water pressure by using a pumping system. Addresses again the low pressure in that northwest part of town. Four hundred seventy thousand there is the cost estimate. The Jacobson incentive, the, the city has, uh, has agreed to an incentive that is equivalent to the amount of tax abatement that they otherwise would have received. But we would give them this as an incentive up front. Again, just a, a up front incentive helping them with their, uh, with their construction costs. Then. The incentive is $66,600. Again, that's just paid to them uh, up front as they're finishing up their project. Again, development agreements are already in place for that. For these, um, for these projects, what happens is then the city issues debt to pay for these projects or to pay for the incentive. And then the debt is repaid over a number of years then using TIF revenues that are generated in, in the uh, urban renewal area or in the TIF zone. And again, largely from Evapco, it would be the, the biggest participant, but also um, a Jacobson's, and then any of the, the new construction occurring on the highway. Let me get to the to the community center. The community center uh, has been identified uh, in the 2016 urban renewal amendment with potential use of TIF revenues of three hundred thousand dollars. Then, right about this time last year, October of 2020. The, the city council had a motion to increase that to 500000 I see what the motion was. To earmark the TIF funds contingent upon the committee raising the needed funds through grants and private donations. So that's the, that is the action that the, the council took in October of 2020. So just a little up, update on, on where we stand then with the, uh, the money side of things. If the cost estimate on the project is about $1.45 million, then you can see what, uh, about the committed funds. The, so the city there for $500,000, again, that asterisk indicating that that's, we need to raise the other funds also. Um, the Great Places Grant. Now, we just heard uh, within the past week that, uh, that the uh, community center was awarded a grant from the Great Places, Iowa Great Places, <coughs> and that grant is $250,000. Sac County has a, agreed to participate uh, two years at 10,000 each year at 20, and then the private fundraising side of things would so be at, at 118,000. So they've raised some substantial amount of money. It's 888,000 dollars, but 
still compare that to the top line where you're at 100, uh, 1.45 million. It's still quite a little bit of work yet to be done then for the uh, for fundraising. So you talk about what the next steps are there really, and it's, and it's to continue to raise money. So continue grant seeking and continue private fundraising. And I know the, uh, the committee will be uh, putting out word of, about private fundraising and actually uh, doing a, a fundraising mailer will go out to everybody here in the very near future. Could be next week. So to increase from 300,000 to 500,000 does requ require this urban renewal plan amendment. Okay. The other thing that's unique about, about this one in particular is that the funds are on, on hand. They're on hand yeah, in the TIF fund. And so we wouldn't be issuing debt for this. This uh, question had come up too. Why, why do this amendment now? Uh, and the timing on, on it especially. Two things. We need to certify debt for that phase one of the Evapco water and also that Jacobson incentive. We need to certify that to the county by December 1st. See, it put internal there, we would have some internal debt to, uh, to pay that uh, to start with, and then we'll turn around and pay ourselves back with TIF. And main, main reason why this thing actually is drug out here into the fall, and we had intended to, to do this in, in the summer and early fall, deals with health problems for our attorney. And uh, we've used this, this same bonding attorney for, I think that you've used him for 30 plus years. And anyway, he does have some severe health problems with cancer and was not able to assist us, and we ended up uh, having to be moved to a different attorney within the firm. So, and then uh, that all just took time. So, um, there, that is, that's it. The same thing applies if you want to address the council, please stand up, go to the board room, state your name, and try to limit it to two to three minutes. Would anybody like to participate? Go ahead. Felt like um, felt like I was being stared at. <laughs> Fine. Um, you know, I'm here to represent the hometown pride committee, the Lakeview um, Community Center committee. Where push that thing forward if you play. Sure. Mind my rear right in your face. <laughs> sure, that's awkward. Sounds <laughs> <here too. laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> So, um, as you all know, this is not new news. It's been um, in the paper um, at several of these meetings um, on Facebook that we've been working um, hard as a committee for um, since 2016 for the Lakeview Community Center. Um, if you've been on our Facebook page um, as of late, you can see there is um, a wide um, display of support for the community center to be moving forward in our community for a wide variety of reasons, um, which really stem to the overall umbrella, which is economic development in our community. Um, tourism is one of our uh, primary industries here, and we know that is um, the effect on the um, tourism within the community uh, growing and, and becoming stronger is, um, you know, goes to the quote of when uh, the tide rises, all boats in the harbor lift, and that's what the community center is. Um, when the community center is up and we bring visitors and more tourism to our community, it supports our local businesses um, in town. Um, we've been so um, blessed to have additional businesses come to our community, um, our downtown improving, and the community center um, is just kind of the next step to keep the community growing because you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. So I would hope that um, our council uh, would see the, the vision and see the big picture of how the community center impacts um, not just bringing tourism to town but our local businesses um, as, as well. There are several business owners um, here uh, tonight in support of the community center. Um, I guess if you're in favor of the community center, I'd invite you to stand up and, and show your um, support this evening if that's a project you would like to see happen in our community. Okay, that's everybody except about, I don't know, you guys can talk about growing. 
I guess let the record reflect that there is a, just a tremendous amount of support uh, for the community center. It is, um, you know, truly a gift to the city, um, a project that we have worked so hard on and is supported by, by so many. Um, I've had questions from a lot of people. They're, they're tough questions, but we're prepared with those answers because we have done our thorough um, research hours and hours and hours of time to crunch the numbers, validate the numbers, make sure that the plan is, is thorough, um, that it will work, that the center will run in the black. And we are very confident about that. And I think the support from the community um, just is parallel to, um, to what we've seen with the numbers. It's, it's, it's clear and um, it's gonna be a great thing, period. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I am against the convention center. The one reason is when I was on the council, we voted on it. And the majority voted no. <clears throat> Scott Peterson said we need to vote again. We don't want to lose that money and we need to use it on another project. So we voted yes to use it so we wouldn't lose the money. Well, I found out that you can't use it on another project. So I just don't like being lied to. You find out later that you just put it back and now you're coming back with it. I think you guys ought to put it to this town. Tomorrow night would be a good night for a sheet, put up two sheets, find out how many people are for it and against it. I don't, I have talked to very many people that are for it. It's just the hometown committee and, and <coughs> some of the committees in town, but nowhere have I found where they make money. Carol turned down, they wanted 40 some thousand. They turned that down. They said, you can't have it. You guys have been losing money. I think it's going to be a big debt to this town. <clears throat> so what was what was the comment from me then, Gus? That in regards said, to TIF, or what, what are you saying? No, I'm saying that when you initially started this, we voted on it, and it was voted down. And you said, in order to keep this money so we don't lose it, on another project, we got to vote yes. What what money is that? Is it TIF, TIF money, you mean? Or what are well, you talking about? Well, it was the $500,000. That we just wouldn't have had that money back then. Uh, well, it was a grant from SAC or somewhere. Okay. You'd have to go I'm back not, to the... Yeah, I'm not sure what you're yeah. referring to. You'd have to go back to the meeting. But you did say that we didn't want to lose the $500,000. What, use years, something else. what years were you on the council? Uh, yeah, Scott could tell you better than I could. About four years ago. I was on there for four years. About four years ago, I mean, it's only been 2017, I think. No, no. Later than that. Earlier than that. Yeah, it was before that. I, but I anyway. don't remember you being on the council when, when we started this project. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember voting on it. And it was voted on and the five hundred thousand dollars. And you said, Well, we don't want to lose that money, so let's vote yes. And yes, here it is back in Well, I, I just can I cannot recall that. It was about five hundred thousand dollars back at the time. We're, we're just now talking about five hundred thousand. Yeah. You don't remember that? No. <clears throat> I'm getting older. Well, <laughs> It was there. You'd have to go back into the meeting part when you first started. Because it was a grant from, I think it was from Miss Phillips. Phillips. That went to the she library. Had, that tourism grant? Yeah. You know, she had something to do with it. I don't recall. Okay. Well, that's all I got to say. I just. 
if you go back to that meeting, you'll find out it's in there. Okay, we can, boy, we can take a look. That's, I, it's, yeah, I'm really not sure. But that's what you said, we need to vote it in after we voted no. So, but I just, I've not heard anybody that's making money doing this. I don't have, know. You, have you talked to Alta, Templeton, yeah. Grand Junction? Stormlight. They're making right. money? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We went and visited them. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. If they sell alcohol, they make money. Yeah. Not much. <laughs> they make money. Webster <laughs> City. Webster City. They all, yeah, they all run the black. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, Denison doesn't make money because the alcohol goes to the clubhouse. Right. Yeah. That's the one that we found that doesn't make money, but they don't sell the alcohol. There's one of the bars are open seven days a week. For, for an hour. Well, no. but we're not we're not voting. We're not voting it anyway. It's just the no. rule is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. okay. We're always away from the community center. Well, I I hope so. <laughs> I think there's a lot more to it. I mean, you can't get supplies now. It seems like it's everything's turned upside down. I mean, if it started by how long would it take to build it? They still have quite a bit of money to raise. They're not ready to build. Yeah. Okay, but Scott, can you go back there? Right, we should get together sometime, Gus. I'd be interested in this. Yeah, I, I know what's in there. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, Marcia. Gus. Well, I just want to speak on a positive note because um, being out at the winery, we get a lot of people from not just Sac County, but all over um, other states and I can't tell you how many times I hear about what a gem of a community we have. And they talk about all the things that are in Lakeview. And um, probably in the last couple of years, how, how progressive we seem to be. And I think this is a progressive move. Um, and I think you'd see a lot of ripple effect. And uh, we can only serve when, for weddings and things. We can only serve small small groups, I'd love to be able to say there's a community center in town <laughs> um, that would handle your your larger groups. Um, so I, I just want to say we're moving in the right direction. Um, people enjoy coming here. I think that says a lot for all of us. Um, and one thing I've learned from the wine industry is you work together. Um, you support each other, and you try to move forward. And um, instead of being competitive, and um, I don't understand the money part of it, and I'd be the first one to admit that, but, um, and I know that's always an issue, but I just want to say, we live in a great community, and we need to realize that, and, and push forward. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> no further. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just as a business owner, also in this community that also supports the alcohol industry, um, I do think we should have a community center as well, and that's one thing we've been lacking for a very long time. Um, I've had people come into my business as well, saying they wish they could have a wedding or a events, um, the reception here in town, and like I have said before, not having that community center, we send a lot of people away from here, and like you said, at the winery, people come in, they come into the bar, they come into the docket, the, they go other places too when you have these events in our area, and um, I definitely support, and like you said, I don't know the money side of it either, but it sounds like you've done a lot of work on it to make sure that that would happen. Um, none of us have a crystal ball, but um, I'm definitely in support of having a community center to keep our town growing and being as great as it is. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll close the public hearing. Resolution 2142. Susan. Second? Second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat>
Okay, so this is is the resolution then to uh, to approve that urban renewal plan amendment. Okay, Boltman? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom? Yes. Reese? Yes. Okay, ordinance 516. Uh, that was the resolution. Any motion on 516? So moved. Second? Second. We'll second. Roll we'll call. Muller? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom? Yes. Walton? Yes. Reese? Yes. Well, your motion to waive the second, third reads? Yes. Second? Second. Roll we'll call. Walton? Yes. Muller? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom? Yes. Reese? Yes. Yeah, one more then is to finally approve ordinance number 516. We have that motion. So moved. Second. Mm -hmm. I'll second. Roll call. Muller? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom? Yes. Coltman? Yes. Reese? Yes. Okay, resolution 2143 is authorizing the internal advance on the funding of the urban renewal projects. Yeah. This would be that internal loan again. Uh, yeah. Funds for uh, uh, the phase one of the water project and then the Jacobs and the Senate. So moved. So Second. Roll call. Moore? Yes. Waldman? Yes. Reese? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom? Yes. Okay, ordinance 517. Any of the code of the ordinance? Okay, the parks and the yeah, so Just that uh, what this does is uh, we had talked about the uh, number of park board members. It's at three. And we'd look to uh, increase that number then. This ordinance would propose to increase it to five. And uh, then the, the only other thing that it does is uh, assures that the terms are then staggered. Uh, so that's every two years. The terms are still six years long. I'll make the motion. Okay. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. We'll call. Tom's. Yes. More? Yes. Reese? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Can okay. we waive the second and third so we can get started on this? Yeah. You can? Okay. Another motion? I'll motion to do that. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Tom? Yes. More? Yes. Reese? Yes. Bolton? Yep. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Now we find one more to find out the proof of the word. Yes. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Roll call. Motor. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Holden. Yes. Reese. Yes. We have change order number one on the third street curb and gutter. Okay, hey, just on, on that park board issue first before before we proceed then. So we have a three member board. One term comes up at the end of the year and then there's two two more open spaces now. So we'll be looking for uh, good park board volunteers. Change order on the third street curb and gutter. Yeah, I did want to have a little discussion on this because when so this is that change order down or the curb and gutter down there on third street, it's more like John Snyder's house. Um, in the the original cost on that six thousand eight hundred eighty five dollars, and when they when they tore it out, it did make for a jagged edge then along that uh, asphalt. We did ask that they would square out that. Uh, that asphalt, make sure that there's a clean cut and that it would be replaced then with, uh, with concrete as opposed to, uh, to coal patch. So uh, they did, they did that. When I was having a, a discussion with, with Mr. Linen about that, my suggestion would have been that the city would pay for materials and that the, uh, the contractor uh, should be on the hook for some labor get the bill from them on this and it does include the labor portion then also. So um, interested in your in your thoughts or Scott add anything? We hired him to do it, we ought to do it. Dale we know it's flat. Yeah we know it's flat and don't drain. Not very good. But there was no fall. It was like a quarter of an inch. Isn't that why we replaced it to start with so you have fall? 
Wasn't that the issue that the water sits there? Water still sits at the end of that driveway. We talked about this at a few meetings ago, right. correct? Right. And I said, you know, our, our contractors, somebody's going to hold them liable for doing it correct. Is it correct? It sits at the bottom of what driveway? John Snyder's driveway. Yeah. Well, he just told his neighbor that it all drains on his now and it's all over on theirs. Well, John Snyder told me it doesn't any better than it did before. There's three inches of fall on 153 feet. That's close to 137 inch per foot. Yeah. Water was still in my there. contract, is I can't guarantee water flow without changing street. You, know, you can't put the gutter up higher than the street. I can't I was down there that day. Yeah. So, 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 we, water the street. so we did a project that wasn't fixing nothing. That's it what I unless, you, unless you did the whole 700 feet. Well, Scott, I, I'm not arguing with you. Don't get me wrong here. Oh, I, know. Um, I was at the meeting a few weeks ago and I talked about these projects and we're doing projects that spending money that ain't fixing the problems. So we, it, it's just like we talked about at Crescent Park Drive. It's the first swing and a miss. Now we got to fix it, we're going to fix it right. It pushed your problem to another area is what it did. So there's only seven, seven inches of fall and about 700 feet there. Yeah. So, so what, is your, what is your solution, Dale? What is it you think ought to be done? Well, so it was tore up. It should have been fixed correctly. And if we need to raise that street, then raise that street so everything drains to the storm sewers. Well, it ain't draining right. We have these problems all over. You mean take the whole street the out? It was torn out the fall. What's that? It was discussed before it was torn out how much fall there was. Yeah, see, that, that was my discussion. And I've said this before. If we're going to fix stuff, let's fix it right. Well, we can't disagree with that. So, we so, had you, to do what we have. so you think we should have torn the whole street out and redone the whole street? We should have done something. If you could maybe raise up that side part, that was a perfect opportunity when John Spider had that all tore up. You could raise it higher right then and there. <clears throat> the street? You don't have to raise the whole street. You just got to raise the parts that drain that way. The street drains both sides. You got to raise his driveway area up. Street drains from the curving gutter that's there north or around the curve. There's no inlet going north. So five foot from that existing inlet, it drains 100% north, northeast. So, and now we're trying to make it drain to the south? No. We changed it to raise it even more than we could, and we drained about 30 foot to the south. And had to keep the rest going north. There was no way of doing everything coming south to the inlet. So this is a perfect opportunity to discuss this since Scott's here. So what was the discussion about fixing it the right way when you talked about it ahead of time? I said you couldn't fix it unless you did something with the street. Okay. It's the same I said issue. you have very you have less than one thirty seconds of an inch per foot. So it's the same issue we got going at Crescent Park Drive that we're trying to fix. I'm just bringing it to your attention again, John. You know, yep. you know what I'm saying? And I'll get a change order for it again. Just wasting taxpayers' money, making a swing and a miss. I thought we did the best we could with the lay of the land. It's pretty flat down there, no matter what you do. And we can't do the street. We didn't have 150000 to fix that street. No, I think we got money sitting around. I hear that in a lot of meetings. And it's all, we use uh, state money to do the streets. So much per person, about 120 bucks that the state sent us every year. Well, we've got money for other great projects. We've got to take care of what we got instead of keep expanding stuff. I love the expansion, don't get me wrong. So we we, we got to fix what we got, too. Nope. I guess I was under the impression that this was going to fix the issue. Well, it, it can't fix the issue when the people that sit to the... I don't know what direction it is, but <laughs> I'd like to say east. <laughs> um, the people that sit to the east, you know, now it sits there, and from John Snyder's looks to me like it does drain. Now, I, I don't know. I guess I should have went there in the rainstorm, but um, but they think it's his is draining much better. Um, I, I agree. I think you had it was it, about two inches low at John's question. John's original driveway or curving deck. They got raised there about two inches because there's about two inches of water set right. in front of his back. So now it's kind of just a minute. Now it's kind of sitting in front of the Probably other two. It more. Yes, right. So now obviously there needs to be, but but a huge street project is a huge street project. Um, you know we'll we'll be looking at that. I mean, and the new council will be looking at that through the new through the new budget hearings, but. Um, it, it'll be a major, major, major expense. Um, and we got to figure be, out what street. That would probably be your easiest thing if you ever did. Put a new inlet in. Right. Expand your, the 
curving gutter, not curving gutter, but the inlet up to there, yeah. into the middle of that 700 feet. It was about 700 feet from the south end of where we did it to the around the corner. I'm going to call it north northeast, whichever yeah. direction you right. want to call it. There is no inlet in there. Yeah, and I think that's part of our problem around town is we don't have enough inlets. But we owe those people on Lakeshore or um, Lakeshore Drive. You know, we owe them. We've made a commitment to them too, and they're three years out and haven't had it fulfilled. So there's some major street projects that need to be addressed and figure out which ones we're going to do first. So in, in, in regard to this curving gutter, though, and John Snyder, we talked with John Snyder about it, and it boy, it, just, it does not drain completely. And he mentioned that he might have a couple inches of water uh, still at the at the end of his driveway. But he also said, you know, he would not recommend that we try to do anything. I got a foot at the end of my driveway. Yes, yes. Well, I was there the day that he died. You know, we looked about, you want to know how far out from the curb, so we didn't have this black top sticking out all over. And he said, there's not much fall here. It's, it's pretty flat ground. He said, we'll do the best we can. I don't know what else we could have asked for. At the time, we weren't going to change over for the extra time. Right, to get right. Rid of the asphalt, which I said we were going to have to. Right. Because it's too much older. Right. And I, I would expect the city should pay the bill. There's nothing we can do if the ground's flat without tearing the whole street completely apart. And that will be way more expensive than everybody thinks. I would well, take do, you have a, do you have a signed agreement saying what you're saying? About the, About there, there is a, yeah, there's an initial, basically. But you went back and asked work. them to do more work. Is that my yeah. understanding yeah. 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 After, it, after that, after it was removed and ends up with this jagged <laughs> edge cut in there, yeah, we did ask them to cut a smooth, a smooth edge. So obviously next time if we do a patch job like this, we need to do a better job of telling the contractor what is required. And just I think be real careful about the tear out was, was maybe what we had gotten out of this more than anything else. A, a saw cut to, to assist with the tear out would have helped. Yeah, the tear out was the complaint they had. Do you have any comment on that, Scott? That was, that was cut. That's a two inch overlay of asphalt. Anybody's ever tore out anything around asphalt in between? Solid dirt, you have to lift it to get it out of there. The second one cuts out there because you can push it away. You have no place to go. First of all, you got dirt way higher than the curb to begin with, so there's no way to go on the back side to get the curb away. When you lift the curb, it catches it binds, it's going to crack off. Right by contract said so there is going to be chipping and will require a cold patch behind it. Okay. It's written okay. in the contract. He was very good that day saying, I wanted to go this far out, and he said, if you go this far, you'll take all that straight and do That's what we did. I don't, I don't know what else we could do. Pretty hard to drain flat ground. It's kind of like draining the camp. Can't drain it. That's a tight enough to battle. Yeah. But I think we've got to motion to approve the payment and move on. I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second it. Roll call. Thank you. Yes. Motor? Yes. Reese? Yes. Fulton? Yep. Thomas? Yes. Okay, resolution 2144 is authorizing the real estate contract purchasing the north part of the parcel. So this would purchase the uh, shop. The north uh, portion of that land, the north of the maintenance shop. Okay. When you look at this at this uh, real estate contract, it does not have anything to do with the trail land or that or that uh, uh, railroad right away. Okay, this is just the just the land to the north. Um, this does follow through with what was uh, approved at the last council meeting with one with one big change that, that benefits the uh, city. So the total purchase price is still twenty five thousand um, dollars. We would uh, pay two thousand dollars down down now. And then we would make five annual payments, and we had initially uh, discussed ten, but so five payments of forty-six hundred dollars with three percent interest. Um, Dave Janet had prepared this uh, this contract and should be ready to go. Motion to approve twenty-one forty-four. So second. I'll second. Roll call. Goldman. Yep. Reese. Yes. Muller. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Okay, Bobby's got the lift station working. Yeah, I tell you what, we, we just have, that's on page 35, just a, a certificate of completion for the uh, for the sewer out at the, at the landing and then also for the lift station. 
So they are recommending that we would accept the uh, sanitary sewer and the lift station portions of the project. And you see that Bob's had the road down the grade now for, for a while in anticipation of paving it and then of course the rain. And I don't know what his, what his plans are yet because of course the weather's going to turn cold now. So. How come the lift station, the red light is always on? Are they supposed to be? Or is it supposed to be? No, it's not supposed to be, but I don't know that it is. Dean should be getting a, uh, an well, alarm on his phone. Alert. Alert. Maybe I got one. I got to go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it was late in this morning when I went by with the bus. It was? Yeah. I never got it. Yeah. I ain't trying to tell you to do grief, you know. I'll go look at it when we leave. And it was um, one other day we go by and it was late. It was, uh, they were working on it. Uh, King Construction filled it up, oh, and the high level was on oh, okay. on that day, yeah. and then <coughs> on the next day because that's when day. we did the start. Have to do it for start. <laughs> I go by every morning. Yeah. 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 Reese. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. We, we do the health insurance, which was about three-some percent. Three point eight two percent on this renewal. And really not uh, not too much of, of note here. We would look to have the, the same plan. Um, three point eight two percent ends up being about thirty seven hundred dollars throughout the course of the year. Um, uh, one one change that we that we did make is that Previously, we worked kind of through Kettering and ended up with a broker out of town. Now, Kettering and the new owners are able to broker their own stuff, so everything now is, is directly through Kettering's for the, uh, for the insurance. Yeah, that's good. We have a motion to accept the insurance for you. Paul Maggard. Second. Second. Roll call. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. Mover. Yes. Reese. Yes. Boltman. Yes. Tom. Yes. Okay, we're going to send some Czech County grant applications in. Yeah, just uh, we'd love to uh, potentially do two, two grant applications, looking at one to be for the, for the community center project, but then another one that uh, would be discussed here might uh, be a pickleball project. And I know there's some committee members here who would who like to talk about that. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself as a new librarian? So we can <laughs> I'm Marion, you know that. Yes. <laughs> they may not. Okay, I'm just here to speak positively about pickleball. Um, pickleball is the fastest growing sport. Michelle fed me the figures three million, over three million, over three million players. Um, it's ideal for all skill levels. It has very similar rules to tennis, badminton, um, uh, ping pong. So it's really, really easy to learn. It's a very social activity. It allows for a lot of conversation and interaction, which we could all use a lot more of these days. Um, it's healthy. It improves balance, agility, reflexes, coordination with absolutely no stress on the body that you don't want to stress your body over. Um, it's perfect for parks and recreation um, because it's very affordable and adaptable. And I think we have a chance to get this going in our community. Um, I'm from Storm Lake originally, and we never got it going up there, so let's go Lakeview. <laughs> uh, it's great. Um, Vicki plays. I play. I love Michelle it. Michelle plays. Diana, I'm over here. Jackie plays. <laughs> Connie plays. And we have a great time. In fact, um, we've now had to move it indoors from Sac City, uh, where we play Tuesdays and Thursdays all summer long. We've moved it inside to City Hall up here. And uh, apparently someone asked, are we bothering you with the noise of the ball and the paddle? And they say, no, we enjoy the laughter. So, you know, it's, it's great. I'm all for pickleball. I learned how to play it with a broken wrist. Um, I'd really like to see it happen in this community. 
Thank you. 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 Thank
I, you know, if we could start with maybe one court, and I, I'm not so sure that by the time we're done fundraising and the time we get the grants that we aren't going to have enough for two courts in the spring. And I think some of your bids are going to be a little bit better, hopefully. So um, I'd like to make a motion that we move ahead with this. Is that the kind of motion you want? What Can kind of those of us out want? here know what the cost is? Sure. So the total cost on, on two, two pickleball courts, total cost is right at $100,000. The this initial grant that we we would apply for for SAC County down is twenty five thousand, and so if they're if they're looking at one to, to start with, we would uh, uh, look at making you know, something along the lines of half that amount and fund half that with the grant and uh, some with some additional grants fundraising and and then again the question about whether the city would financially participate. Yeah, do you, I don't know, do you want um, to put a cap on it for the city, you know, that the, kind of like the community center, that the, the committee has to come up with a percentage of grants, and I mean, I don't know what anybody thinks. I'm certainly open to that, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Chris, you need to show 50% cash, cash match, part of that can be volunteer labor, so you cannot prospect other grants as part of your cash match. Okay. So the city's okay. commitment right now would have to be twenty-five thousand for the fifty twenty-five thousand okay. dollar award. All right. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. And that should you. be work. You can volunteer labor can be counted towards part of the cash match and the in-kind contribution of the of the community would count towards that. That's always how we've looked at that. So you could put city employees on the project and count that towards the project dollars, but. Um, you could certainly still go after other grants, but until they're secured, we can't count that as matching funds. Connie, you're confident we can get some of that by spring? Oh, I think so, yeah. I think both ARP and Walmart will be two of them that will. Because we got Walmart for the splash pad, 50000 right? Tammy wrote that Tammy one, yep. That. This yep. is the same thing? Yep. Yeah. Your motion, Vicki, would say 25000 Yes, contingent on them getting the other grant money. Second? I'll second. Welcome. Okay, Tom. Yes. Holder. Yes. Reese. Yeah. Yes. Wilden. Yes. Thank you. Yes. The city administrator report. I don't really have nothing other than. You see the Sac County League. Sac County League is, uh, it's not until the 17th, but it'll be over in Auburn at the, uh, at the new restaurant over in Auburn on the 17th. And then Northwest Iowa League's right away the next day at 18th and then. Nothing else. We have a motion to adjourn. I'll make it. Second. Meetings adjourned. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Appreciate that noise. We need it. Thank you. Oh, all right. Will you introduce him to me? Nice job, Mary. Thanks, Brad. How are you? Social distancing.